morning, everybody. Tammy Treyer, TreyerWilderness.com. Welcome to my home and to another Facebook Live. Uh, this year's conversations have been on new beginnings. Um, the blessing that we are given a new beginning every day. We get a fresh start every day. And through the process of these Facebook Lives, I've been giving you tips and tricks on homesteading and off-grid living, as well as um, some faith-based things to um, build up your day-to-day -day and strengthen you in other ways. So good morning, Miss Courtney. I am going to really quickly invite those people that have uh, struggles getting on our live. So bear with me a second here while I quickly do that. It is pretty darn warm out there today. Um, I know in Montana it's supposed to be over a hundred. We have been in the 90s and really warm, but we are supposed to see a drop in our temperatures coming next week, so this is a good thing. I like this time of year. We are hitting into the fall weather, which is my absolute favorite time of year. Lots of time in the woods. Oh, bear with me. One more second here. One of the, there we go. Okay. Okay, I think they were both sent out. Oh, we've got a bunch of people on here joining me. I see lots of numbers, so jump on and say hello. Tell me where you're from. And glad to have you guys joining me today. Today's topic is um, actually a really important one. Um, continuing to prepare. Good morning, Miss Melinda. Good morning, Miss Mama Mona. Um, preparedness month is September. And um, honestly, our family focuses on preparedness every month, every day. It's like every day is building up to the next day and our future. Um, but the big focus in September is to get people um, focusing on all aspects of preparedness. And there are many. Good morning, Miss Tammy. Oh, you're at work today, Miss Melinda. Well, you have a great day too, sweet friend. It's good to see you joining me. <laughs> One of the biggest questions I get from people is how can you be prepared when you don't have money to do so? And being that we are in that position ourselves right now, I want to touch on that because there are many ways we can still be prepared um, despite not having funds. One of the greatest ways we can prepare ourselves is with knowledge. The knowledge of the skills necessary to be prepared, um, learning new skills, learning new techniques. Um, another thing is we, um, we can a lot normally. I'm unable to preserve and can my food this year. Um, for one, we didn't grow a garden um, with our house for sale and the things at the pace they were. There was no sense planting a garden. I was too fearful of wasting seeds um, because I wouldn't be able to maintain it. And um, some of my resources in the past are not available to me, as well as we don't have the finances to purchase produce other than what we would have grown. So. I'm not able to can. I am living vicariously through a bunch of you ladies out there, Miss Kelly and Miss Shelley and Tammy, um, with your gardens and putting up your food. But I do um, purchase in bulk. I purchase all of my non-GMO organic ingredients so that I can make anything from my larder. And, you know, dried beans and different things like that can be canned and prepared ahead of time. So being able to do that enables you to eliminate your cook time and your pre preparation time on your beans by putting them in canning jars and processing them and having them on your shelves ready to go and take off the canning shelf. That's a great way to be prepared. Dehydrating food, preserving food, 
um, fermenting food, and also stocking up on your ingredients are real important aspects of preparedness. Um, but learning these skills is even more important. If in, and if it's something that you're uh, fearful of, it's something that you should be learning because um, that fear can hold you back from progressing. And being able to put your own food up on your shelf is priceless and it may be something that we need to do in the future. Good morning, Charles. So don't feel that when you don't have money, you can't learn how to do things. The other thing is when you don't have the finances to maybe purchase foods, maybe there's bartering aspects that you can do. Um, if you are homesteading and you have, say, goats on your homestead and you have the milk, you could maybe barter milk for produce from somebody that does have a garden or that is growing organic things. Um, there's many of ways that you can um, progress even though you may not have the funding. Good morning, Diane. She says, hello, I have had a lot of experience in gardening, but it is nice learning something new. Awesome. And don't be afraid to share your aspects of things as well and what you have learned. And good morning, Barbara. So glad to have you guys joining me. That's awesome. And I'm glad you're speaking up because it's always nice to know people are out there when I'm jabbering away on the other side of things here. Also, where, are, where is everybody from? We've got people all over the country joining us often. Um, we have people in the UK, we have people in Australia. It's very awesome and then there's people all over the United States so it makes it really interesting and everybody has different things they've learned because of the terrain and area you're in as well as just uh, different aspects of things that may have been handed down. So don't hesitate to share. Now, something else that I am kind of being forced to do right now is we are doing a lot of foraging and um, making different things. I have been, I actually um, foraged some lichen from the trees. It's also referred to as old man's beard. Actually, I'll show you, because I didn't start processing it yet. Some of you may be familiar with this on the trees out here. It's very prevalent. Um, I know that in the south it is very prevalent also. Good morning, Nikki and Sanford. And uh, awesome, Diane is from uh, Grayford, Texas. Awesome, glad to have you joining. But this is um, old man's beard lichen. I am going to use this to make a usnea tincture and um, I am foraging wild fruits. I am foraging whatever I can from the wild right now and uh, also looking for uh, deals on uh, produce. Sometimes in the grocery store you can um, purchase in bulk. Uh, locally you may be able to find people with their own gardens that have abundance. Um, where we moved from, um, there were farm stands all over the place. Good morning, Miss Shelley. So you could go down the road and stop periodically and, and get very different fruits and vegetables from people that were selling in front of their homes or they had stores at their homes. <clears throat> it's not available here and um, it can make things very difficult if you're not growing your own food. And we are seeking organic and non-GMO foods because of our dietary needs. So it can be difficult when you don't have funding, but that doesn't mean that you are limited and can't do things. There are many fruit trees out here that go untouched, which to me is a crime. I see all these apples and plums and they're just untouched. Nobody is foraging them. Nobody is harvesting them and they are just going to waste. To me, that is something I would be seeking. I need to be able to do applesauce. I like to do, um, Shelly was just doing this last week with peaches, um, pie filling. When you do pie fillings, those can be used for all kinds of things. You can make pastries um, and fill them with the, with the uh, pie filling. You can use that in your meats, in your roasts, in your slow cooker. Um, fruits with meats are really, really amazing because they give your meats a nice um, moist but also sweet taste. So I also fry, fry things up in my frying pans with such things. I also use jellies. Um, my jellies that are preserved on the shelf, the Mountain Man pulled out a thing of my uh, 
pepper jelly, which is actually, it varies depending what I use. I've made hot pepper jelly. I've also made sweet pepper jellies. Um, but being able to forage from your surroundings is really important. And, and uh, if we take the time to do these things, we can save ourselves a lot of money. And um, oftentimes you might find people that have these uh, overabundant trees in their yard and they can, can no longer get out to pick them and that's why they're going to waste. So sometimes it doesn't hurt to cautiously knock on someone's door and ask if it would be possible to forage some of what's on their trees. And like maybe what you'll find in that instance is that they are unable to forage maybe because of age. Um, they might like some, so maybe that would be a nice barter to be able to pick some for them and also pick some for yourself. So don't feel like because you don't have the money, you cannot be prepared. Knowledge is 90% of preparedness in my opinion, because if you have the skills, you can do anything. And, and that is an important aspect of things. And it's not just with food and canning, it's hunting, it's butchering and preserving your own meats. Um, Miss Kelly, who I don't believe is on today, she had an appointment, but she was, she butchered a bunch of her roosters. She was making soups and canning them. She was doing broths and canning them. She was also canning just the meats. So being able to do that as well is a really important aspect of things, putting that meat on the shelves, utilizing everything from the animals and knowing how to do that kind of thing. And that this is true even if you're living in the cities. And I really mean that wholeheartedly because if something were ever to happen to our food supply and you don't have a basis of knowledge on how to handle your own foods, you're gonna be in a great, great struggle. And eating and drinking, those are two of our primary basic needs as well as shelter. So I really feel it's important that we take the time to learn these skills. And if you are unfamiliar with some of those things like butchering or canning, you can find how to's on our YouTube channel by going to treyerwilderness.com slash YouTube. It'll take you right to our channel. But being able to take care of yourself and your family in any situation is basically our goal. Our goal moving here was to be able to live in a place where we had the knowledge, the know-how, and the hands-on on a day-to-day -day basis and the, and the equipment we needed that if everything fell apart, we would still be able to do our day-to-day -day things. So I'll give you an example. We are off-grid, we use solar power, but if our solar power was no longer available to us, we have all the tools in our kitchen, in our shops, in our, in our, uh, on the homestead to enable us to be able to keep going because we have backups of our tools. So example, you may have a modern day mixer that is electric. I actually have one. Well, I did, I gave it away. Um, what I use is a hand mixer. So I don't need power, I just need muscle power. And that is true of all the other tools that we have. We have modern day tools in many essences, but we also have the um, traditional backups of those tools. That includes saws, grain mills. Um, I also utilize a sun oven. I use a grill. I use a Dutch oven. So having the resources and the know-how to keep doing everything you need in your home is a really important thing. So if I don't have propane, how am I gonna cook my food? Okay, I could use a grill till I don't have propane in there. If that is no longer a resource, I can use my sun oven to cook in the sun. If that is not a resource, any longer because it's a gray day and raining, that means then I can have a fire. And even if it is raining, I can still uh, provide myself an area where I could have a fire outside and be able to cook a meal in a Dutch oven. Tammy says there are a lot of hand crank appliances that are normally electric. Absolutely, you know, you have to look at it this way, that our ancestors had to have something to use. And, uh, and sometimes, 
you know, um, some of those tools, rec like milling your flour, some of them use mortar and pestle type um, pieces, uh, rocks and, and pestles to be able to mill the grains. Um, Miss Tammy gifted me with a uh, meat slicer that was hand crank a couple weeks ago. And we have a hand crank um, uh, meat grinder also. Uh, so being able to utilize these hand crank tools are really important. And you can find modern day made tools um, that are replicas of the antiques. Now I don't want to, I'm not going to say this openly, but often to, it's, this is a sad thing to make the statement of, a lot of the modern day tools do not hold up as well as the 50 year old antiques that are still working. And I hate to say that and that saddens me to say that because the quality of what is available today is not what it used to be. But there are companies out there. Um, Layman's is a company that makes a lot of the traditional tools and they are good and solid and well made. So, and, and they are costly, but that expense may be something that will be worth your while. That is one thing that we have done here over the years is that we have spent money on things to allow us to enable to keep going. When you invest in something like that, though, whether it's an antique or a very well made um, product of today, it's something that's gonna last. And the, the thing there is also to take good care of what you have and um, have what you need. Shelly says there is nothing more satisfying than whipping cream with a hand mixer. I agree. Honestly, I just love using my old tools. Uh, there is just something uh, so comforting and, and, and uh, romantic. And I know that's going to sound funny and the men may laugh at me. My husband laughs at me when I say stuff like that. But I think I shared it last week. You know, I had packed everything up in preparation for moving and just had a couple things out and I was using my stainless steel bowls to make my breads in and things and you know that was great and all but something that gives me great pleasure is using my big pottery bowls when I make my bread because I can knead it it's it's a flat bowl versus a high bowl and being able to work in in the dough and that and and to use my old tools just means a great deal to me. It's a simple pleasure, and um, right now, simple pleasures mean a lot to me. Shelly says, I'm always looking for the non-electric versions of things. I have, I have collected such a wonderful variety of tools, and I've found them in thrift stores, some in antique shops, and the thing is to really do your research. Here's a great level of preparedness. Do your research and make a list of the things you need that you want and, and look on eBay, look on um, online, maybe on Etsy, different places and see what things are going for. So that when you're out and about and you find something at a yard sale, at an antique store, at a thrift store, you have some kind of comparison <clears throat> price to determine whether you are benefiting yourself by purchasing that or if you could do better somewhere else. That's something I've taught the mountain boy is to do your homework, do your research. My coffee grinder that's on the wall that you guys, many of you guys have seen, it's a cast iron glass uh, coffee grinder, hand crank coffee grinder. That was a housewarming present to ourselves. And I knew I, was I found a treasure when the person had it listed on eBay and they had it pictured upside down. They had no idea what they had. I purchased that for $20. The others that were listed on eBay were 120 and because this person didn't know what they were selling and didn't have it listed properly, it didn't get very good notice. I just happened to find it. So knowing how to look for things um, and sometimes not being so quick to purchase something and keep waiting. You know, sometimes in a fi financial position where you aren't able to do such things, you just keep looking. and. You know, if it's meant to be, I look at it this way too. If you find something and it's ex either extremely high in price or 
it's a great price, but you don't have the money and you have to walk away from it. If it's meant to be, it will be there when you go back. And I have gone oftentimes to places where that treasure was still there waiting for me at a good price. So if it's meant to be, it'll be yours. But keep looking and, and do your homework. <clears throat> Tammy says there's a hand crank blender. We gifted one to some friends and it worked well for them. I have seen those. I have been looking for one of them. I do have a regular blender, but I, that's one thing I don't have is the hand crank um, blender, which I would love to have because it would make it nice for smoothies and different things. Um, in the winter months especially because when it gets gray it's harder to use most modern appliances because they are used uh, mainly uh, via heat and heat uh, creates a lot of power so good morning Jennifer glad to have you joining so what are some other ways you guys frugally prepare because that is one of the biggest struggles most people have is not being able to stock up on things because they don't have the funding Another way to do that is purchase things on sale. Um, purchase in bulk ahead of time when you do have funding. Um, a lot of times, uh, such places as Costco's, and we have a Winco out here, um, Sam's Clubs, different places like that you can buy in bulk and get yourselves really good deals. Even Walmart has bulk buys. Um, so it, it is important to shop around. I actually have a grocery list compiled of five different stores that I shop. And as things change and as people are getting more non-GMO foods, um, I'm able to change my shopping and move items from one store to another. Um, Walmart's Potato chips, if my guys would like potato chips with their sandwiches when they're working, I do make my own, but I do purchase non-GMO on occasion. So if I were to purchase chips in my local town, same company, same bag, same size bag, $3.99. I go to Walmart, it's $1.98, and it is $1.98 at Winco. So it does pay. That's an hour away from me, though. So again, when I'm shopping, I do like a round robin. I hate shopping, but we'll make an errand run and hit certain places so that we are uh, being frugal with our fuel, but also being able to get the things that we um, we need at a better price. Tammy says auctions are a great source for the older things. Absolutely. Estate sales, yes. Um, and summertime and fall tend to be really good times for those things. Spring as well, but um, it can be really, really beneficial. That's where we've been very fortunate to find a lot of our things, that and yard sales. I got the blender from Shelt Shetler's. What is Shetler's, Tammy? Tell me that. that is that like a layman's? Um, I'm curious. Shelly says, I have been buying bananas at our local store that are bagged for quick sale and then freeze them for baking later. Smart. Yes, very good tip. And also, um, if you happen to be able to get things, produce in abundance right now, that you could go and gather things, um, tomatoes, um, all kinds of fruits can be frozen and then processed later. You can um, make jellies and jams later. You can make your sauces later. So if you have freezer space but you don't have time now, that is a great, great way to do things. I have many friends who um, have beautiful gardens and they do a lot of freezing and then canning later on because they can't can everything at one time. So there are, are certain things that they can freeze and process later. Um, same with meats. Um, if you can get meats on sale, um, now we don't buy store-bought meats uh, just because of the pink slime and the GMOs, um, but we do a lot of canning in our hunting season uh, when we are processing our meats because we have a smaller cubic foot freezer that's propane versus an electric freezer. So we will, we will can our meats as well. We will save our roasts and, and maybe cut up some steaks that go in the freezer, but the burger and that we will often uh, can. Um, mail order only used by a lot of Amish. Okay, can get, you can get a catalog. They have a lot of good stuff. I'm gonna have to check them out. I never heard of them before. Thank you for sharing. Awesome. And that was one of our highlights um, 
back east was a lot of Mennonite stores and Amish stores had bulk foods that were a lot less um, expensive than if you went to um, other stores or purchased online. Amazon is a great resource too, but I'm going to tell you, do your homework and pay attention because um, a lot of times uh, I have been finding lately that their prices seem so high compared to what I can get otherwise. Okay, Diane says, when you give food to friends, ask if they mind giving the jar back when they finish it. Doesn't always work, but let me see if I can see that whole thing. My, there's a When there's a big uh, comment left, it doesn't always let me see everything. It gives me the option to hit a button that says see more, and I can't always hit it. So let's see what, hold on. Okay, let me see if I can see the comments. But yes, that is an important aspect of things, is being able to get your jars back, and most people will give them back, um, which is a nice plus. Um, and, and the other incentive that you can do there with people is if you do give them um, a jar, tell them that when they return it, you'll have other goodies for them. So if they like what they got the first time, they'll be certain to give it back. I usually freeze all my berries and then next year, just as they come into season, I will make preserves out of any leftovers. Awesome, that was Shelly. And that's that's great ways to do things. Um, I do a lot of foraging. I will be getting elderberries and uh, rose hips after our first frost. Oh man, my, my uh, rose bushes. Well, I told you everything bloomed really good here this year. And... Um, my rose bushes were one of them, and man, it is just loaded with rose hips. So I'm so excited about that. That is a great thing to preserve. Um, very high in vitamin C, very great for your winter months, both elderberries and rose hips to help keep you healthy. Uh, so I preserve those. I will be drying the rose hips. I will be drying some of the elderberries for tea, and then I will be doing juices and tinctures and... Um, probably freezing a good bit that I will have to access later. So those are another resource to me that are in abundance out here, and it just amazes me. I mean, they're, they're in overabundance, but it amazes me how few people are actually foraging them. Um, but there's so much in the wild that we can take part in as well. So don't miss out on that if you see things um, just going to waste. We are very fortunate here. Some people just don't like to get out and, and put the effort out. But I'll tell you what, if you put the effort out, you are you will definitely make out well. Bartering is a huge thing, though, as well. If you can barter something that you have in abundance for something that you need, that is so huge. We, we enjoy doing that and uh, do that with all kinds of different things. The other thing is this. If you have people local to you that you know also purchase in bulk. Another great thing to do is go together on things and be able to um, purchase in bulk and split it. Same with produce, that's another great way to do. Okay, Courtney, Courtney's heading out to water the greenhouse. Those folks there in Montana are busy this year, they have had so much good stuff going on and, and so much uh, produce coming from their gardens. So it really pays off if you can learn to plant things. If you garden or you would like to garden, you don't have a lot of space to garden, look into square foot gardening and, and don't um, forget to consider being able to plant in pots on your back porch or on your balcony. Um, hanging uh, and vertical planting is also an option. When we move forward from here, we will have a greenhouse and we will be utilizing every space of that greenhouse from vertical gardening to um, raised bed gardening to layered gardening. Um, there are so many different things you can do as far as growing things. Right now, I've got my spearmint tea here in the house. I've got another pot of that outside. I've uh, transplanted my comfrey and horseradish, thanks to Tammy. And um, I'm utilizing pots to do that this year. I would have loved to have tomato plants, but it just didn't work out this year. 
Um, there is nothing better to me than a fresh tomato. Oh my goodness, I miss that so much. The store-bought tomatoes just, they're mealy and they have a really weird plasticky taste to me. So um, I don't even waste my money on them. But what are some other ways you guys save um, and, and frugally prepare? The other thing I want to remind you of is um, wilderness survival preparedness and outdoor preparedness. Um, these are two aspects of things that we heavily focus on. We live in a very vast area. So preparedness um, for us consists of not just on our homestead, but um, our vehicles, when we leave our home, if we break down, we are in a very vast location. So having the right attire, having the right shoes, having the right gear at all times is important. Not just in the winter months, but all year long. Having extra water, having extra food in our vehicles. Um, we have all these great locations underneath the seat of our vehicles that we can shove things, and that's what we do. We utilize every space in our home as well as in our vehicle and don't waste space so having the equipment you need um, in the winter months our trucks uh, look very different than they do now we have sleeping bags and extra winter clothing um, blankets all kinds of things um, good morning Rachel I am so glad to have you joining me um, Rachel has reached out to me recently uh, as a result of my podcast and I am so excited we've had some really good conversations and I'm glad to have you joining me sweet friend um, canning venison is good because you don't have to rely on electricity exactly exactly um, and uh, I want to mention this now um, before I forget if you guys any of you joining me have friends that need prayer or you need prayer please don't hesitate to ask. The group of people that you are surrounded with today on this um, live video are tremendous prayer warriors. We have an amazing community of strong, prayerful people and we have a community of loving people and I am in the, blessed, the best seat in the house and the most blessed seat in the house because I get to watch everything transpire and how God is working in everybody's lives. We will talk more about that in prayer requests, but I wanted to mention that. And I also would like to ask that you all keep Rachel in your prayers and her family. Um, they could use some prayers as well as um, Kelly who is and Courtney. They could use some prayers in their family as well as Tammy and her family and we could use some prayers. We will jump into that a little bit later, but I wanted to mention that for those of you that are on here now with me. Um, please don't hesitate to ever ask. You don't have to share all the details. Details aren't important because God knows what they are, but we will be very happy to pray for you if you need them. So, um, back to what we were saying here. Shelly says, I always have some of that sort of stuff in my vehicle. I do not think I have ever used any of it, but it's always good to have. Um, and I can't see if you said more there, but yes, um, we have had to use our gear in our vehicles so many times. Um, we took friends out hunting many years back, a couple years after we got here, and uh, we got way back in, jumped out of the truck, ready to go hunting, and all you heard was tss. And the mountain man always... He's amazing. He is the MacGyver to begin with, but um, he always has everything on hand. I was always brought up that way too. So he's got the tire repair kits on hand. Um, we had a very amazing German friend joining us that, that day. And praise the Lord, the man's got big fingers. It, this was the funniest thing, but there was a big bolt stuck in the tire of the truck. And... They got it all together, got it timed right, and pulled the bolt out. He slammed his finger in the hole, and then they switched places, and the mountain man did the repair kit. And um, we were on a wing and a prayer, hoping it would hold. While we went out hunting, we're there, might as well hunt. So we hunted and came back to the vehicle, and it had held, and we had a uh, tire pump in the uh, vehicle as well. Of course, they take forever, but it still got air in the tire and we didn't have to hike out many, many miles to go get help. 
Um, but we have used our come-alongs and our shovels and our digging bars and our ropes and all kinds of things, as well as foot power. Uh, my mother-in-law and Austin and I broke down um, a couple years back and we had a hike uh, over five miles back to the homestead um, at dark. So having lighting and headlamps and um, water and extra gear is always good. We always carry our firearms as well, which was good as well because we were traveling through the wilderness for five miles to get back here. Um, so you never know, coyotes uh, were letting loose uh, nearby, howling. You know, we share the wilds with a lot of wild animals out here. So being prepared in that regard is very important. We have wolves that have come in within 50 yards of our home. So I'm always packing. Um, I We believe very strongly in our Second Amendment rights. So um, I, I utilize them on a regular basis. Um, so being prepared in those regards, in the winter time I always have my front pack. It is a small pack, very lightweight, um, uh, it fits on the front. So everything I need is at my, right at my hands. For us women, it's not hard on the back. I know that there are many times when I'm carrying certain things that I feel it in my back. This pack makes it very convenient. It also has my fire starting kit, a uh, uh, reusable space blanket, and a non-reusable space blanket in there, bandana, knives, um, lip balm uh, for both my lips, but it also can be an accelerant for fire, uh, and a lubricant for my fire piston to start a fire. So having these things on hand, um, is really important uh, because you never know when you're gonna need to utilize them and it's just kind of funny when I leave the house even in the summer you know I'm a girl I like to wear sandals sometimes um, but if I'm driving a good distance I often think about that and I'll wear my Keens instead because I can hike in those if something were to happen so it's just a matter of processing the things you need and in the environments that you need um, going out and practicing your fire making skills. I know that sounds funny, but we've taught our son at a very young age how to light fires. Um, out here, that can be a huge life saving skill. So uh, you teach them uh, the importance of the skill and also both the pros and the cons of the skill so that they are aware of it and don't misuse it. Um, but for them to know how to light a fire, for them to know how to make a shelter of the things in their surroundings if you don't have anything on your body. Um, out here, spring and fall, weather changes very fast. It might be, well just as an example, we went out hiking on um, Labor Day and took our hammocks and our packs and went out. Well, it was 90 some degrees, but at the top of the mountain, it was a nice cool breeze under the trees. So the mountain boy said, you know, I should have brought a jacket. You always have extra gear. You have a, a jacket wrapped around your waist. Um, actually, the mountain boy and I had been out one time when we first got here. It was spring. It was t-shirt weather. It was beautiful. We're out hiking, but we took our sweatshirts along with. Well, it was good we did. A snow squall came in, and you couldn't see more than like 10 feet in front of you, and we needed to put on our, you know, our coats and, and muster back to the homestead. So... You never know, and we all live in different environments. Our environment out here is very different. The terrain is very vast, um, and, and there's not a lot out here. So, and there's not cell service everywhere. So that's the other thing. Uh, we are pretty much surrounded by 30 miles of no cell service. And um, unless you can get to the top of a ridge where you might actually catch something. So, you know, knowing your area, knowing your surroundings, knowing the importance of the things you need for your environment. You might be in tornado area or flooding area, so therefore you need to plan accordingly in your preparation um, differently than we would for our wildfire season. So it's important to know these things and be prepared. Shelly says, I want to do some off-season camping so that we are prepared for any weather. It's really important. Um, when you said that, it, the first thing that came to mind is lighting a fire. You know, we all think that if you have a lighter, I have a lighter in my pocket all the time. My, I don't have my water 
uh, my normal water jug here, but it has a uh, paracord bracelet at the top of it. I utilize that all the time. For one, the paracord bracelet enables me to attach it to my belt so I'm hands free if all of a sudden I need to be in a situation where I'm climbing up a mountain vertically. I can attach it to things, but I can also take it apart and use that paracord to tie down my space blanket and make a shelter in a quick fashion. Um, Diane says, I could really use prayers. I need a little wagon to pull around the yard and garden and I'm putting in a fall garden. Well, we will certainly pray for that, um, that it will appear to you. And it, what's amazing is uh, just seeing how God has been working in our community and how things are gifted and provided. Um, we, were, we were gifted this morning greatly. Uh, God just continues to work in all of our lives. He knows our needs. So it, even something like a wagon is uh, never an odd or awkward prayer. It should be something that we are asking him for. We should be asking him for everything we need. So you got it. Um, in regard to Shelly's comment about any weather, when you light a fire in the winter, not necessarily even in the winter, um, in the rain, uh, in the snow, you are dealing with a very different situation. If it's been raining nonstop, if everything is covered in snow, things are wet, lighting a fire is gonna be harder. And the more you learn to practice those skills, the better you will be in those situations. Um, and also knowing where to gather your dry tinder. If there are fallen logs, and they're hollow, oftentimes on the inside of the log you will find uh, dry tinder, dry things. Um, birch bark, regardless if it is wet or dry, um, birch bark is thin. If you pull the, the pieces of birch bark off of, or cedar, I'm sorry, well cedar or birch actually, um, if you pull those strips of bark off of the tree and put them in your pocket to warm them up, they're thin, they will dry, and they make really good tinder. Also, the uh, old man's beard that I showed you earlier, uh, that'll be hanging in the trees, it'll be brown. Uh, oftentimes you can find a lot of that dry and, and also put it in your pocket, warm it up with your body heat and you'll be able to start a fire. Carrying dry tinder with you in those situations is important. I have um, cotton fabric, I have cotton balls in my kit. I also have charred cotton fabric and cotton balls in my kit. Um, purpose for that is so that I can use the charred material to easily start a fire, but I have more to create more charred tinder if I need it, if I'm stuck out there for a long period of time. Um, again, the skills you have of knowing how to hunt food, forage food, knowing what to forage, knowing how to, to um, uh, sterilize water, um, to get good drinking water. If you can't light a fire, you can't get good water. You need to boil your water. So it, fire is important, shelter is important, water is important, food is important. Knowing these things, good morning Ken, Knowing how to do these things on the fly is really important. What if your vehicle breaks down and you're on the way somewhere and you are stuck in the middle of nowhere and it's on a road that doesn't get a lot of traffic? What do you do? You gotta make do and you gotta learn how to do these things. And teaching your children these things are life skills. Teaching your children to butcher a chicken is a life skill. Our butchering video on YouTube got flagged as inappropriate inappropriate for all audiences and that aggravates me. I understand why but it aggravates me because this is a skill that could save children's lives if they know how to do it. Same with hunting and trapping animals. You know a lot of people are against it but if you are in a situation where today's food is no longer available what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? So knowing these skills, learning these skills and, and you know, killing an animal can be a hard thing for people. So can gutting an animal be difficult. But if you learn that skill and, and continue to work on those skills, they're not as horrible as they initially were. Um, firecraft is an essential survival skill. Good tips.
Thank you. And thanks for joining. Um, the Mountain Man and I have a lot of survival videos on our YouTube channel. He has done a series on um, lighting fires uh, with um, many resources. He has used the sun to light fires, a fire piston, a bow and drill, friction fires. Um, we've gone through the whole gamut and, and given you different scenarios. We've done different videos in dry area as well as in the snow because we get out every season and practice our skills. We like winter camping, we like snow camping, we like spring camping. We're out there as much as we can um, and as we move forward you will see us in the woods all the time. It is, is a passion of ours. The last three years with my healing process we haven't been able to get out as much but we live for being in the woods and um, that's why I share this with you because there have been many a times when I did break down and, and um, I was blessed that my dad uh, made it a prerequisite to getting our driver's license that we knew how to change our own oil, change our spark plugs, we knew how to change a tire. Having those skills saved me a lot many a times. I changed my first tire at 14 when my I was out with my grandmother and she got a flat tire. You know, being able to do those things are, are important. My first car was, I think it was a 76 Nova. It was, it was a learning experience. I learned a lot through that. I learned how to start the car um, by messing with the distributor cap because it got water in it. I also learned how to start that car many a time uh, by taking the air cleaner off and having to mess with the choke. Um, you know, we all have those past experiences that brought us to the knowledge base that we're at today. And I think everything that we go through in life is important. It takes us one step closer to um, being more prepared uh, through our life's uh, challenges as well as our life's experiences. And that's why I encourage you greatly to make it a point to learn new things all the time. And being able to be in situations that you can keep yourself alive and, and well is important. You never know what circumstances you will be in. My one girlfriend was a very avid hiker and she and her family had been out and um, they broke down and a storm came in and uh, she had to get out and hike to get help. And uh, it was quite crazy the distance she went. She was gone for multiple days, um, but she survived because of the skills she knew. Another friend of mine uh, does uh, emergency retrieval uh, in the back country, uh, I believe in Colorado, and he said that it has been absolutely painstaking and painful to find people that um, didn't make make their situation. Their uh, snowmobiles broke down and they they froze to death because they were trying to light the materials and the items and their credit cards and their money in their wallet instead of reaching up into the tree where there was dry tinder to enable them to start a fire, to use the remaining residual gas in the tank to light a fire. They had so many resources available to them but they didn't have the knowledge and they died as a result of it. So that's why I say no matter what aspect, howdy, no matter what aspect of preparedness um, we're looking at, whether it's um, a preparedness at a home level, preparedness in a vehicle, preparedness in the wild, it's important that we not only know the skills, but practice the skills. Practicing our canning periodically is important so that you don't get rusty and, and um, being well versed in the outdoors is also helpful. Learning how to hunt and and even trap, uh, you know, being able to trap small animals um, like squirrels and, and things. <laughs> Thank you, Tammy. Tammy said hi to Austin. I'm not sure. He looked like he was on a mission of sorts, so <laughs> he came in and went right back out. Um, but being, being versed in these things uh, is so important. Knowing how to make a trap with sticks and, and paracord in the wilderness can be life-saving. 
um, knowing how to strap a knife to the end of a stick and be able to um, go out and, and hunt food. You know, there's so many different aspects to things and we look at them all because it's part of our lifestyle. Uh, but not everybody looks at things that way. You might live in the city, you might live in an apartment, so those aspects of things don't really, in your mind, may not feel like it's something you need to worry about, but it is. Because if things were to fall apart, and you know I'm not a doom and gloom or doomsday kind of person, but the last place this girl would want to be if things fell apart would be in the city. The first place I would be heading is out of the city and into the woods. So I want to encourage those of you that might be in that situation and in that environment to consider those things. And to consider, you know, even if uh, you don't get out into the wilderness a lot or you don't aren't an outdoorsy person, what if your vehicle breaks down? These are things that you've got to consider, okay? So I want you to consider those things. Think out of the box. Think out of your norm as far as things that you should be prepared for. Another aspect of prepared for, uh, prepared, preparedness and that you should be prepared for is um, a medical aspect of things. A first aid kit. What would your first aid kit look like? Mine would be a lot of natural remedies, um, utilizing things in my surroundings. Um, also in my kit, I carry essential oils, I carry certain salves, um, and uh, I carry certain homeopathic things in my kit because they are things we use on a regular basis. Good morning, Holly. Uh, so having those things, knowing that those things would be useful in many situations, Having things in my kit, uh, and this is my, my front pack, my day pack, the thing I carry all the time, um, would be um, oils and salves and things that would have multi-purposes. Um, my lip balm is a perfect example of that. Uh, that could be very, it, my lip balms are typically um, medicinal in some stretch of the sense with the oils that I might put in them. Um, so having them uh, to put on a cut, uh, put on a scrape, that kind of thing, as well as using, like I said, as a lubricant for a fire piston to start a fire. So everything I have in my kit has purpose. I used to joke because I do carry lipstick too. Um, my lips get dry. There are certain lipsticks that keep my lips drier than if I was using a chapstick. Uh, when I rode motorcycle, I used my lipstick and I still had it on me, but it was also something I could use in a pinch to start a fire and to do different things with. So, you know, my kit has purpose. There, uh, there might be girly things in it, but I can use them for multiple things. So, you know, thinking that way of multi-purpose and having um, backups of your tools. My kit has uh, three, at minimum, three ways of starting a fire. I also have three different knives I'm not rough on my knives, but if something were to break, I need to have a backup. I need to still keep going. I always have a pocket knife on me regardless what kind of clothing I'm wearing. Even if I'm wearing girly pants or capris, they've got extra pockets. I shove them in there. You know, so having these things on hand is really important and knowing how to use them. The biggest thing I want to say about that is they sell a lot of survival kits and preparedness kits, but if you have a kit and you don't know what's inside it or how to use them, what good is it going to do you when you're in need to use it? The other thing is this. The other thing that kills me is people talk about having their preparedness kits and their go bag by the door. They have this massive bag loaded with all this stuff that they don't know how to use. It's extremely heavy and they get out and they go a bunch of miles and then they've got to pitch their kit or start unloading their kit because they don't have the ability to carry it because they're not in good enough shape. So these are the things we think about. These are the things that are important to us and an aspect of our life that um, our homestead has instilled in us as well as our, our lifestyle and desires. We love the outdoors. Um, our homestead uh, keeps us busy. And 
through that, we don't need a gym. We are very physically fit as a result of the tasks that we do on our homestead. Um, I know Courtney and Kelly for sure can attest to that. Um, they've been busting their butts this summer working. And each season brings different tasks. So um, another level of preparedness is our firewood and foraging firewood. Many of you might purchase your firewood by the cord. We go out and we fell the tree, we limb the tree, we cut the tree, we load the tree, we come home, we unload the tree, we chop the tree, we load the woodshed. That's great physical work. And that is work that not only keeps you fit physically, but it also keeps your mind fit. You've gotta pay attention to what you're doing, you've gotta know what you're doing. Not only that though, that kind of work produces a good sweat, a good workout. And when you're out in the woods, you're renewing your your entire body, mind and spirit while you are out there. So these are the kind of things we do here for a level of preparedness. And yes, there are times when we can't afford to prepare, but we don't just stop and sit here and, and not prepare in some way. We use our minds at that point and start delving in and learning new skills, learning new things that can be useful to us. So don't be stagnant in your preparedness. If you can't afford to prepare and stock up on things, learn new skills. It is one of the best things you can do for yourself. Now, Covered a lot of stuff today. Do you guys have any questions? Do you have other input, excuse me, that you would like to share with me on that aspect of things? Because if not, we'll jump on to the next level of our conversation. Um, but this was a good way to start our preparedness month. And we will continue to talk about that because there's multiple levels of preparedness and there's a lot of avenues to preparedness. One of the biggest things I hear from people that want to be prepared um, and prep. You know, you've got your preppers, you've got your homesteaders, and I think that homesteaders are just in general preppers because it's our lifestyle. Um, preppers are, in my mind, people that put things away and stockpile things but may not always utilize them. Where I feel that as uh, the way our lifestyle is, we utilize everything and are constantly working to fine tune um, our aspects of things. So uh, what I was getting at is that when people want to dive into this aspect of things and they want to be prepared, not everybody in the family is on board. So we will talk about that moving forward to how to get the rebellious ones that don't understand the need for preparedness on board. There are ways. Um, but if you guys don't have any questions or any comments in regard to the survival and preparedness aspect of things, which we, like I said, we will be talking more about, I'm going to delve into our second uh, area of conversation. And this also pertains to being prepared. And that is um, when you're in a situation that you can't afford to do things, sometimes you hit a point where you weaken. You get weary. Uh, many people deal with a lot of fear and worry and anxiety in life as a result of um, your fears. I am thankful to say that I do not have fear and worry and anxiousness, but I am tired. I am very tired and I am very wore out in our situation. And um, today I'm just gonna be transparent and honest I'm wore out, and so is the mountain man. We are just plum tired. We've got a lot on our plates and a lot of unknowns, and, and um, the things on our plates, we attack one at a time, and we don't let them consume us. The things that are unknown, there are many. There are so many unknown aspects to our day-to-day -day life right now, but we're not putting a lot of thought into them. To be prepared, we've discussed them over the weekend and we're um, discussing how we could combat them as well as progress in the certain scenarios. Uh, but we, we gave our things to God so that we're not consumed by them. And um, one of the things, one of the questions I get a lot 
is um, how do you know how to pray when you don't see God's hand in things? And how do you know that you're praying right? And how do you know um, how do you know how to pray? Well, I want to touch on that. And I'm going to explain our scenario and our situation right now. Um, these are some of our unknowns. And I'm going to share them with you because maybe some of you are in similar situations or maybe you know somebody who is or maybe through my situation and my transparency. Um, you'll find greater strength. And to answer that question and those questions that people have, you just keep praying. You pray without ceasing and you trust. My dear friend Shelly told me yesterday and expressed to me um, yesterday that, um, you know, she pointed out that there's not much in our in our day-to-day -day lives that we really can't control and and control the outcome of which is very true and as I said last week you know there's no sense giving negative headspace to things that we can't control or to waste time thinking about things that we have absolutely no control over whether it is financial marriage um, our children a job the thing is if it's things that we cannot control and keep in mind one of the biggest things we cannot control is other people uh, we are plagued sometimes with other people um, affecting our lives and um, just the weirdness of our world today good grief you watch the news or just follow a thread on a YouTube video or on a Facebook post. It's insane how people think today. So we can't, we can't control other people. All we can do is pray for them. And that's, and like I said, all we can do is pray. And I, and to some people, you know, they'll think I'm naive and I'm foolish that, you know, I trust God in such a big way as I do. Um, and that I, and then I, I, fall back on the resource of praying but to me that is a preparedness skill that is a survival skill at its finest and um, we need to focus on that we need to focus on keeping our joy and focus on praying and focus on what we can control and what we need with the tasks at hand and and work on them and in the meantime keep praying when you feel anxious, when you feel afraid, when you feel worry setting in, you need to pray. You need to read God's word. God's word is powerful and it fights off the enemy. And the enemy will constantly attack when we are in these positions that we can't control a lot of what's going on around us. Miss Mona, you ask about new devotionals. I have a gift for you. I just need to get it to you. Um... Reading a daily devotional is a really important aspect of things. Focusing on the positive in our lives on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, sometimes in our circumstances, there might be very tiny little blessings and that's all you might be given. Well, don't wash it off and, and, and shrug it off as a little blessing. It's a blessing and you need to hold tight to it. Here's what I'm going to share with you. We are in a circumstance where we are um, forced to sell our home because of my medical debt. Uh, we've been in a three-year journey for me, uh, going from life-saving surgery to healing, and praise God, I am healing. Um, I am having some health issues right now that I need to deal with, uh, but as a result of that extreme debt, and despite our greatest efforts, um, we, we can't get ahead, and there's nothing we can do to change our circumstances right now. We're, we're way over our heads and, and we need to sell our home. If we don't sell our home before winter, I don't know for certain, with 100% certainty, that we will have a home. It may be taken from us. This is where we're at. I've always said that as long as I have my family, I could live in a shoebox and I will be happy. So 
whatever God's will is for us and whatever his plan is for us, even if that ends up being living in a shoebox, God's plan is bigger and better than anything I could have ever imagined and there will be great purpose in it. That purpose may be to help lead others to strong faith, uh, to courage, to go through the hard. God's going to have purpose in all of this. Um, the other thing is, is if we are able to keep our home and our house doesn't sell and we are here for winter, we are ill prepared. Um, we don't have propane. We can't afford propane. Um, once winter sets in, we could work past that. Our propane uh, operates our freezers, our refrigerator, our, our cook stove, our water heater. Um, you know, I'm okay with getting a cold shower. I actually practice doing hot and cold showers anyway it's good for your health um, we could do solar showers we could do uh, solar heating of our water to get a shower so I'm not really worried about that um, cooking I can cook in multiple ways right now the only crisis might be that we'd have to find a way to keep our meats cold um, there's ways to do that uh, the other thing is we don't have a full firewood shed because we haven't been uh, harvesting because we are planning to sell, we can go harvest firewood. Um, the bigger concern is our larder. We've been living out of our larder. We don't have the amount of food that we would need to make it through the winter out here. Um, we don't have the funding to replenish that. So uh, we are greatly trusting God. And that is what we are doing. Um, these are things we can't change. Um, if we do sell our house, praise the Lord if we do, um, and I've been thanking him for selling our house for months now, and I'm still trusting him to do that. Um, we will be upside down, sideways, and all over the place at a, at a very quick pace, and we will need to pack up our things, and we won't be able to do anything as far as moving forward until we settle. So there's a lot of unknowns. There's a lot of crazy things going on. There's, uh, To be honest, we have not been in such a bad financial spot to date as we are right now. Um, but I'm trusting God. And and that is an important aspect in things. And sometimes when we go through the unknowns and we have so many unknowns, you can't allow it to consume you. Good morning, Chad. We need to be able to push ourselves through and be able to keep our trust in Him. And you know, straight up, that's a hard thing to do, and it's a really hard thing to do um, for people that um, may be new in the faith uh, or may be old in the faith but just don't have a strong faith. So if you're weak in your faith and you're struggling in a place like we are, the best things you can do is read his word. Get into his word and and. Be aware of the truths that he is offering us. He will not forsake us. Think about it. He feeds the birds. He's going to take care of us. I am not worried. And I've told you before, I am, I am really seeing the truth in the five loaves of bread and the three fish. I keep going into my freezer and I just keep wondering where this meat is coming from. I know I was only down to like you know, three weeks of food, and that was four weeks ago. So where, you know, it's like the, the, the meat just keeps replenishing in my freezer. And we have, you know, my mountain man is a meat and potato kind of guy. But we've got beans, and we've got rice, and we've got all kinds of other things to eat. You know, so we will not starve. We will not wither away. Um, but there are concerns, you know, we know what our winners are like here. We know what our situation is. Um, and those unknowns could consume. Most people will allow those things to consume them and they will spend their entire day just thinking over and over and over again about these things and what they could do to change these things. But in reality, there's nothing that we can do more than what we have already done to change our circumstances. So we don't waste our time thinking about it. We've given it to God. Now, people say, well, how do you give it to God? You know, what does that look like? Well, you know what? God, I can't do anything more in my circumstances. 
I'm giving this to you. I want you to take it. Don't allow me to take it back. What do I mean by that? That means don't go back to thinking about it. You give it up, you give it up and you leave it there and you trust him for the outcome. I have been trusting him for the last three years for the outcome of so many circumstances. When I give him something, I don't want it back. I, I can't do anything with it, but he can. That does not mean I don't get tired. That does not mean I don't get weary. That does not mean that I need to escape my circumstances sometimes and go out and hang in the woods on a hammock. And we did, and we do, and we, we try to remove ourselves. When negativity sets in, I go for a walk. When negativity sets in, I listen to my favorite music. When negativity sets in, I'll sit and pray. When negativity sets in, I dive into the word. When negativity sets in, I go to my Evernote or my Workflowy where I have a list of Bible verses that I can go to to really quickly combat negativity because negativity is the enemy sitting on my shoulder, sitting in my home trying to work me over. I'm not going to allow him to work me over. I don't want him in my headspace. I don't want him in my home. I don't want him in my presence. I don't want him working over my men. So I pray that he leaves and that he works, that he goes elsewhere, that he has no hold on us or my family. And, and yes, it is not a weakness to be tired and weary and worn. It is human nature. We work hard. We work hard physically here. We work hard mentally here. We work hard spiritually here. It is human nature to be tired. One of the things we need to learn to do also is rest. And I have learned to do that well over the last three years. When I'm tired, I lay flat. And if I can sleep, great. If I can't sleep, maybe I'll read something and just rest my body. And I can tell you that when I'm done doing this, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Because I've not been feeling so well the last couple, well, the last week, since last Wednesday. So, you know, you do what you've got to do. But we've got to learn how to handle, let me see here. Mona says, how can we help besides prayers? Our peaches will be getting ripe. They're high and us old guys can't get them on the ladder. I can't see everything you say, but I would love peaches and I would love to pick some for you. That would be fabulous. Um, prayer is huge. I don't know what to say as far as how people can help us. There's many ways that, um, People can support us. Um, on our website, there is a support us um, link and a contact us link in there. Um, prayers are huge. Prayers are so powerful and God is working mightily through our prayers. Um, we were blessed this morning by the kindness of a dear friend who um, blessed us. And I've been listing things for sale and uh, they're, they're starting to sell. So that was a blessing. Um, but there are, there are ways you can support us um, by joining our community, uh, by um, using our Amazon link in our support us page. When you do that, we get a small percentage. Um, spreading the word and, and sharing the word uh, with people that we are out here and that we are educating and that we are um, you know, sharing faith-based preparedness, that is always a huge help. Um, but your prayers are so important to us. And, um, you know, when I share this, I, I'm not sharing this so that you feel sorry for us or so that you, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not asking for anything from you. I want you to know that. I am sharing this because I am feeling led to share this because I hear the struggles and the stories of other people and what they're going through and what they have gone through and how we can learn from each other's experiences and how my faith, as strong as it is, has grown from having Kim Johnson in my life and sharing her walk through the death of her husband. Um, you know, we can help one another through our walks. So I feel that God has me doing what I am doing and sharing transparently with you all so that I can be a light to others because maybe 
people don't have as strong a faith as I do in their walk. Um, and, and they need guidance on, on how to keep going. You know, because when you get weary and when you get worn, it's a great spot for the enemy to just slide right in there. And then he brings you down to your knees. And sometimes people don't know how to get up from that spot. I don't let him get me that far. I fight back. And I read Ephesians 6 in the morning. And I, I read it boldly and loudly. And I kick him off my property. I tell him to go pound sand and find another place to take up residence, residency. He doesn't belong here. And you know, he's going to fight us because we are sharing our faith. He's going to fight us because we are in a weak spot in a place where he could easily take over. But we're not going to allow it. Uh, Job is my hero. And, and I'm, I'm fighting hard. And so is the mountain man. And... You know, when, when, when I expressed my weakness, you know, in the past I felt so weak and so lowly to have to have my faith shaken and that I, I have to ask for prayer and I have to, or, or when I talk about my circumstances, you know, it's like I feel, I feel that if I were listening to me sharing that I, I would be like, oh my gosh, such drama. But you know what? That's not the case. Um, I'm learning that what I'm sharing is double-sided. I'm sharing my weak place, but I'm also sharing with you how determined I am to be strong and beat this weak place. And the only way I have found to do that is just to dive into his word. I have been waking up every night since Wednesday between 2 and 3 o'clock in the morning and the enemy has just been trying his darndest to attack me and fight me and beat me up. And the first night I went out and I created a work flowy that has topics of different types of prayers. <laughs> he silently said hello. Um, you guys didn't melt? It's getting pretty hot. Uh, it's getting hot. There's a very breeze blowing. Good. Um, in this work flowy, I created uh, different Bible verses on love, hope, courage, faith, fear, prayer, um, all kinds. It's long. It's a long list, and there's lots of Bible verses in there. I couldn't sleep, so I used my time wisely, and I created a go-to place for me to just start co combating the enemy. Um, spiritual warfare is another one in there. And I go in there when I can't sleep now and I read through that list. And as I read through that list, it is, Chad said, hey, brother. <laughs> hey, man, hope you're doing good. Praying for you. <laughs> Tammy says hello. Yep. <laughs> Tammy. <laughs> Hi, Tammy. <laughs> and um, I'm reading through that list and that list is giving me strength, it's giving me peace, it's giving me comfort in that wee hour of the morning where I am refusing to allow the enemy to get involved. The other thing that I am doing is I am reading the power of positive thinking, which is uh, written by um, Norman Vincent Peale. You can find that by going to treyerwilderness.com slash power of positive. That book is fabulous. He was born in 1898 and he was well ahead of his time in this book with what he shares and it is just a powerful, powerful read. Uh, I am loving it. I could read this book over and over again. This book is so highlighted, it's amazing. Um, so I'm gaining so much from it. So finding good resources, finding good tools, finding positive people to be around. and. Um, and I want to thank Rachel for messaging me the other day and thanking me for my podcast because it was something positive that she came across. And you know, that was such a great thing for me to know that my resources are out there and they are helping people. But also, it lit a fire under me. And when people reach out to me, it does light a fire under me to know that God has placed me here with purpose and that I am truly reaching people. I see him reaching people too. We both have different ways of reaching different people. He looks scared. He's Who's scared. Him? Huh? Who's him? Him? You. My man. You know, he reaches different people because he's doing trapping videos where he's sharing his faith. But God has given us abilities. He's given us 
the internet and he's given us a voice and many of you have the same ability share your testimonies share your blessings share your stories because you never know what that person on the end receiving it may need that day I'm gonna read this to you this is uh, from Jesus calling I honestly don't remember the date I just I did a screen print on my phone Come to me when you are weak and weary. Rest snugly in my everlasting arms. I do not despise your weakness, my child. Actually, it draws me closer to you because weakness stirs up my compassion, my yearning to help. Accept yourself and your weariness, knowing that I understand how difficult your journey has been. Do not compare yourself with others who seem to skip along their life paths with ease. Their journeys have been different from yours, and I have gifted them with abundant energy. I have gifted you with fragility, providing opportunities for your spirit to blossom in my presence. Accept this gift as a sacred treasure, delicate yet glowing with brilliant light. Rather than struggle to disguise or deny your weakness, allow me to bless you richly through it. How powerful is that? How powerful is that? You know, when you can... Find good resources to read daily that bring you that kind of peace and comfort. That just makes me feel God's arms just wrapping around me. It also does not make me feel lesser for being weak. I am weak. Like I said, he and I are wore out. We are tired. Plain downright tired. Say it, Stanley. We are tired. <laughs> And I, you know, she's saying that, she's not just saying that it's just us. I know a lot of you out there um, are going through real hard stuff too. So it's not, it's not just us. We're not just trying to shine a light on, on our problems. It's, mm -mm. it's, we all have problems. Um, like I said, some of you are going through some really really hard stuff too so we just yeah. got to keep on praying and trusting god and you know know that no matter what happens he doesn't leave us he don't forsake us and uh he's always he's always there for us yep. so you know it's you just gotta plant your feet in that keep your keep your head up and and keep rolling sometimes it's not the a lot of times it's not the easiest thing to do mm -mm. Um, because you're so tired and wore out yeah. and I know I know one man that's on here now that's tired and wore out but you know just keep trusting God you know we can't we can't give up we gotta keep rolling with it Yep. And he will, he will take care of us. He will pull us out. It might not be on our time or what we think should happen. Right. Um, maybe it's maybe it's something, you know. We're 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 praying that God will do certain things in our life. Um, one of them is sell this home. But if he chooses not to do that, you can't get angry at him. You can't get upset at him. You know, he, he's, he's got a plan and a purpose for everything that he does. He can see, he can see into the future. We can't. Yep. So if we, you know, if it doesn't go the way we would like it to go, um, we can't lose heart. We just got to keep on trusting and know that he's got, uh, our best interest in mind. Absolutely. So, I'm done robbing the show. Oh, I like that. You can rob that again. That was good. That was very good. God was definitely speaking through you. Now, here's the next part of this. And, and I know he will smile when he sees what I'm going to read next. There's a second layer to this. And like he said, we are not sharing our story to shine, uh, you know, we're using it as an example. Um, I know through our sharing that we have helped other people in similar circumstances and just our faith alone 
has helped people to stand a little firmer. And like I said before, the biggest question people ask me is, how do you know how to pray? Why do you keep praying when, when nothing's happening? You know what? You got to keep praying. You got to keep praying and trusting that he is there. He is going to um, pull you through. He's going to deliver you. But talk to him like you would your best friend. He, he is our father figure. And I, I talk to him all the time. And I trust that what I ask him he will he will answer in his way just like he said go ahead you she said why you know people say well why do you keep praying and nothing's happening well maybe that's the maybe that's the point maybe god's testing you see if you are going to keep trusting him mm -hmm. or if you're going to throw in the towel and say you're not answering exactly what i want so Mm -hmm. Off I go. Um, you 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 got to keep on. You got to keep on trusting. And how do you know he's not working in the background and you can't see it? How do you know that he's not lining up a million and a half other things that are going to just make every door open and everything start to move forward for you? We don't know that, and that's what faith is. Faith is trusting the unknown. And, and you got to pray without ceasing. Yeah, while, while, you were t while you were talking, there were a couple of things that came across. Shelly said, you are in my thoughts and prayers. You make others realize they are not alone. Mm. Awesome. We're not. We know we're, we're not, not alone. We're not alone. The prayer requests we get on a daily basis show us that we are not alone. Seeing what's happening in our community and what some of you need shows that there are deep hurting people out there and, and that's what we got to do as christians as believers we have to we have to stick oh. we have to stick together and stand up to, for each other you know when when someone's down be there and pick them up yep. and it might not be there um look at what the next thing is you know it might not be that you're there physically to lift them up and, and, and maybe be there to help them physically. But you hear a lot of people say that, well, I guess all we can do is pray. Well, I'm sorry, but prayer is more powerful than anything else that we could do for someone. Yep. Even if someone, if you had a million dollars, and you could were able to gift someone that was struggling. The prayer of now I'm not saying that you shouldn't help them if you can, you know I think you should. But those prayers that you offer up are even better than any amount of money that you could do to help somebody. Now, like I said, you still. If you can, we're supposed to help each other out, you know, and it's, it's, you know, understand if you can't, you know, but, but be there. That prayer, the power of prayer is way beyond what people give it credit for. Very much so. You know, it, it's, 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 it's more than just, yes, it's talking to God, talking with God, but it's more than just that. It's. There's power in the name of Jesus. It says that through the Bible. Um, and just just the name of Jesus, not just, you know, what else he can do for us. Right. Just the power in the but name. The, the, there's power in just the name of yeah. Jesus. I mean, it, 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 with the name of Jesus, Satan must leave us. He must. You know, you... Demons run scared with just the name of Jesus. So how, what power is yep. that in just the name? I mean, that's that's pretty incredible. Yep. Well, and the power of where do you where do you hear what I have to read next? But he and I, when we go to bed at night, we pray before we go to sleep. 
We each pray. And there is a lot of power in that. It says in the Bible, when two or more gather together to pray, that he is present. And, I, and we feel his presence. I, uh, I remember when I was growing up, um, I grew up in a Christian home. I wasn't always a Christian. Um, I got into some pretty, pretty heavy stuff when I was younger. Um, pulled way far away from God. But I remember when I was growing up, my mom had this sign. It was, I don't know, about the size of a license plate, something like that, uh, above the one doorway. And it said, the family that prays together stays together. <laughs> and that is, that is so true. Mm -hmm. So true. Um, you know, you, and I know some of you don't have um, Christian spouses. Uh, but that you gotta that's a little different you gotta keep praying for them and, and yeah. stuff but um, those of you who do have someone that reciprocates um, and that is powerful you wow. gotta you gotta you gotta stand that's what's gonna help your marriage stand trials and stuff and yes we have struggles we have struggles in our marriage it, it's I, I'm, I'm sorry I don't care who you are if you don't have some kind of disagreement God bless you because if your marriage is perfect it's because you're not communicating <laughs> something, something, something's not right but but you gotta pray together mm -hmm. and 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 pray for others prayer is like I said prayer is unbelievable it's also an amazing gift. It's an amazing gift that you can give to each other. Mm -hmm. um, it's an amazing gift that you can give anybody. Um, we, we have so much power in prayer. You know, it's just like I said last week, you know, we have the ability to change things in our day to day by simply choosing to do things. And then you add the power of prayer to that. Um, Shelley said, sometimes I think that the Lord is trying to get us to realize something. I really think we all need to simplify our lives, like going back to not working all the time and to spend time with family and with him. Amen. You know, we talk about that all the time. We are so not of this world. We are so, that's exactly, that's exactly it. And there is a huge part of me that is just screaming for that. I'm seeking that. And, and I totally agree with you. Um, I'm sorry. <clears throat> he's cheating. standing here stuffing my face. I got a bunch of other stuff I got to do. So I'm trying to stuff my face. Sorry. Chad says the Holy Spirit will speak for you when you don't know what to say to him. Exactly. And mm -hmm. Tammy says his answer yep. is not always what you expect. <laughs> Ex Amen to that. Exactly. Exactly. And and you know what? You know sometimes what our what we're asking for is of the flesh. Where God gives us what he knows we really need. And that, that's the key thing is trusting that. Mama Mona says, had to jump off and talk to Kayleen. Hey, Glenn, love you. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> love you too. <laughs> Diane says, support from other Christians are so important and we can have someone agree. I, I love my Lord. Okay, mm -hmm. listen to this. I got to do this now because this is, this is so funny. And this is so true. And this is why... We are building this community. This is why I get on here every week and I nurture you through what God shares through me, but you guys nurture me as well. And this is take the people of war with you. Take all the people of war with you. When you're under spiritual attack, you need to surround yourself with the people of war. They are experienced in spiritual warfare and know how to deal with the enemy. They have proven strategies for victory and tenacious faith that rises up and says, If God be for us, who can be against us? The truth is, the people of war are the people of the word. They know how to take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and use it to defeat the enemy. They're not hesitant about marching into the enemy's camp and taking back everything he has stole from them. 
Anybody can stand with you in the good times, but when you find somebody who can stand with you in the bad times, treasure them and build a relationship with them. Amen. We, are, we have experienced that in multiple ways through this journey, and there is so much truth in that. Now, the Bible says a brother is born for adversity. Did you get that? They're born for battle. That's brothers and sisters. They're not just strong in faith. They're strong in fight. And you won't necessarily find these people in pulpits and choir lofts. They blow no trumpets, wave no banners, and demand no applause. They are here at Trey or Wilderness. <laughs> but they know how to boldly approach the throne of grace and claim the promises of God. After Joshua conquered Jericho, God said to him, Take all the people of war with you and arise, go up to Ai. Say, I have given into your hand the king, his people, his city, and his land. So if you're in battle today, take the people of war with you. That's you guys. That's us as a whole. And that's what makes us so special because we are moving mountains through prayer for each other. We are moving mountains through the word of God. And I am so excited to be sitting in this seat and also to have him behind me because we are seeing what God is doing, not only in our lives, but in your lives too. And it is just beyond amazing. Yeah, it's... I knew you were going to say something, so go ahead. You... You go, you go into war, you want somebody that's trained with you. Mm -hmm. um, anybody that's been in the military knows that. You don't want somebody that's, <laughs> I mean, yeah, once they get their training and everything, they're out of boot camp and stuff, you know, you know a little bit, but you want somebody that's tried and true next to you um, if you're going into war. So why don't we do that when when we got spiritual war going on you know the bible is pretty clear that we we live in spiritual warfare oh, yeah. um it's real no matter how sugar-coated um some of these churches uh try to make it there's there's it's spiritual warfare there, whether you like to admit it or not, you know there there is good and there is evil. There's demonic activity, just as there is heavenly activity. Yep. It's it's so and and people a lot of people, oh that's scary. I don't want to. I don't want to <laughs> think about it. Or they don't want to believe. Well, if if you're gonna believe in God. You got to believe what God says, and God says there is spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. So you can't believe one without the, the other. other. Yep. If you do, you're not trusting and believing truly in God's word and what God says. And spiritual warfare can be bad health. It can be negative thoughts flowing through your head that won't stop. It can be um, anything negative going on in your life, regardless. Anything negative is coming from the enemy. And you've got to remember that the enemy owns this world. The only way God is present on this planet is if we call him into it. And we've removed him from the school. We've removed him from many churches. We've removed prayer and, and reading of the Bible in so many places. We've got to fight to keep that here. And the only way he is going to come into our lives and into our situations and into this planet is if we call him into it. And how do you do that? You pray. You pray. And you teach your children to pray. And you pray as a family. There is something so powerful praying as a family. And, and there's something so powerful praying as a family and seeing your children grow up to have such strong faith and actually to have have such strong faith that they call other people out in their faith. Um, it's and to do that, to do that in a loving way. Yes, it's really and funny. Not, the mountain not... boy, the mountain boy, just has a unique way about him to hold people accountable. And when he does it, he does not do it in a nasty way. It's just his. It's his gift. It's his gift. Mm. But it's. But just seeing how God grows in your family, what God can do, you know, um, our world is upside down, but we still, 
work really hard to keep our house strong in God, to keep the enemy at bay, and, and to live life happily despite our circumstances. You can, you can live in a, the proverbial shoebox um, and make it a home. If God is in it, you can go through anything. Yes. Um, you don't have to have a mansion to go to have God there. You know, God will be, God is everywhere. And quite honestly, we talk about abundance, you know, and I've shared how abundance, you know, debilitates you and how abundance keeps you from finishing projects and it overstimulates you. Well, think about it in this aspect too. What is abundance doing to your spiritual life? And where does that abundance come from. There are two levels of abundance. There is negative abundance, which is the enemy keeping us from things and keeping us clouded with our desire for stuff. And well, there keeping, is abundance in faith. Keeping, uh, keeping you clouded so that you're so focused on stuff. on do stuff and doing stuff that you don't take the time to spend with God yeah. that you need to grow. You know, yeah. he, there, there's, you know, and there's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with having stuff no. as, as long as it doesn't cloud. Become an idol. Yeah, it doesn't cloud your, your relationship with God. But people, one thing that I've seen happening, especially through our circumstance, is that with abundance, you don't realize that it's even consuming you until it's gone. So you're living in this extreme level of abundance and not able to really um, live. I liked what um, Diane said, and I'm and Diane said how she agrees and she just loves my Lord. I'm right there with you, sister. And um, supporting of other Christians is so extremely important and having good people to go to that you know you can go to and, and gain support and not gain ridicule or backstabbing. When you have a community of really solid Christian people Oh man, there is so much growth and I am feeling that here. I just, I love you guys so much. This is just such a wholesome thing. Tammy says spiritual warfare is very real. Yes, it, it is extremely real. Okay, guess what? I figured out how to work the stupid see more button. Now they have it that all you have to do is click on it and it just shows the whole thing magically. So Shelly says that is the sad thing. When they remove the Lord from the schools, they remove the introduction of him <clears throat> into families that are not Christians. Yeah. Exactly, and instill wow. things in children at a young age that there's to keep wholesomeness in our schools. They wonder why there's violence and shootings and and you know such chaos, well, and that's you, why you cannot. And it's been proven through history, um, all the way back since the beginning of time. You know, uh, you, the Israelites learned it, the the Greeks, the Romans, the you know Egyptians, the all through history, um, you cannot take God out of your country, out of your situations, and expect things to run smoothly and to go right. You cannot do that. God, and and it's in the Bible too. You know, you 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 take God out of it. He's not going to stand over you. With a big club and make you do something. You have free will. You're, you've got free will, but you know you take God out of your country, and um, <laughs> look at the children of Israel. Bad things happen. Yeah. Bad things happen, and uh, you do that. You know, even to the respect of uh, narrow it down to your home, to um, your personal life. You take God out of it, and uh, it all man, falls apart. Bad things happen. Yep. I'm putting him on. I'm. I'm gonna put him on the spot right now. Yes, I am. How would you guys like it if he and I did a Bible study or a gathering where he and I chatted, and it's not just me? Because that might bring in the men. Not that there aren't men out there now. I appreciate you being out there, but He's maybe a say, family thing. What are you calling Chad? You better watch yourself. He's my brother. Uh, he's a man. <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs>
How would you guys like that? I think I've been trying to get him to do that and I think it would be really awesome. Um, but, you know, there is so much power in a community of prayerful people and you guys have been helping us so much with your prayers. And I see how through our prayers being reciprocated, how God has been moving mountains in many of your situations and how God has answered many of those prayers. And Shelly says that would be nice. See? Yes, I can see. <laughs> so in that regard, we have a very long prayer list down below and in the description. Tammy says that's a great idea. I think we should. I see. Diane says, let me now let me click now that it opens it up for me. Look at that. Oh, I want to tell you thanks for your fellowship. I hope I can follow up with you in the future. Yes, Bible study, awesome. I'm in. Awesome. I'm really glad to have you, Diane. And if you can't find it here or join us here on Facebook when I'm live, I actually do feed these and, and upload them to our YouTube channel. Um, these do tend to get long. They used to be a half an hour, but we tend to be an hour, hour and a half. But there's such good communication and such good fellowship, and I, I, it's awesome. God is definitely working through me in these and also um, moving these uh, events. So it's really good to have new people, and I'm really glad you took the time to join us today. Um, but a couple things. Um, please pray for the Mills family. I mentioned Andrea Mills. I, I will be very honest. I wasn't familiar with her channel. Our time is very limited on what we get to do on YouTube ourselves as far as watching other people. And I wasn't familiar with her family. And I went back this weekend and watched and, oh, it just tore my heart out. Um, she found out she had cancer. And no sooner than she found out she had cancer while she was pregnant, she and the baby passed. So it was really, really rough. Um, they have, um, that would have been the 10th baby. So um, uh, please pray for the Mills family, uh, the nine children and, and the father that are left on this earth. And just uh, pray for them and pray for... Uh, Kim Johnson and her family of seven, they, she lost her husband and they lost their dad a couple of weeks back. And uh, uh, amazing lady of very strong faith. Also pray for Jamie Spooner and Tim. Uh, they lost their son, Tim and, and Nick were in a car accident together. Nick did not survive his injuries. Tim was beyond, it was a miracle that he's alive. That car was just a mess. Um, but he had surgery. He's actually heading home today. Um, so praising God for that. And they will be having his their son's service shortly. Uh, but such strong faith they have as well. The marches. And the marches um, are on the list below. And like I said, uh, please pray for Rachel and her family. Tammy and her family. Um, lots of change in Tammy's family. Like going to soon be in ours. There's so much change going on. And it's good. It's all good change. It's just new and a lot of it all at one time. And pray for Kelly and Mike and Courtney. Um, they've had some equipment that has broken and um, need some funding. And uh, Courtney's not feeling well. And please pray for Chad. Chad could use continuous prayers. Pray for Mona and Ken in healing. And um, Terry and June need our prayers. Uh, just pray for Terry for some extreme strength and for God to give him some good peace and comfort. And... Um, like I said, there's a long list of people down below. You can pray for them as a whole if you are able to pray for them individually. Not everybody shares their um, needs directly, but God knows them. And I will never interrogate somebody for their needs because that's personal. God knows what it is and that's all we need to know. We just need to lift them in prayer. And if you have prayer, uh, Diane needs, um, I believe it was Diane, that needed a wagon for her garden. So pray that that appears for her because... It's those, it's those kind of prayers, I don't know what it is, that really just, you know, God saved me from a hellacious illness, but seeing that moose in my yard that I asked for personally was just, it was shook me more than, than the illness, saving me from the illness. It was just God. knowing that he was answering that very, very personal little request for me. It was something minute and silly and stupid. God cares about yeah. big things. 
and little things. Yeah. You know, I I remember um, at one of our Christmas gatherings, um, my grandfather lost the keys for his his vehicle, mm. and we all just stopped and prayed. And mm. when you're young like that, you're like, well, what what? Why would God care about a set of keys? <laughs> you know, and yeah. he does. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't long after we stopped writing that we found him. You know, so it, he's he's the God of the big things. He's the God of the little things. He hears us, he, he, and that's the that's the thing. That's the thing you guys got to focus on is the tiny little blessings each day that will help build you up and help you see his his hand even in small ways, and and just. Knowing that he's answering those prayers and remember those prayers. I write my journal. My journal is steadfast This is a, a huge habit now and you know, it's nice to have everything written in there You go back and it's just like yeah, that's right You know that was that little thing that little orange tea kettle that fit my perfect little plant on my windowsill that they that thought I was had nuts. to dig through trash to get <laughs> You had longer arms than I oh, did. Oh, yeah sure. <laughs> Oh, but you saw the great pleasure it gave me. Didn't that give you pleasure then? Yeah. Yeah. So, but it's a little stuff. You know, sometimes it's a little stuff. And hang on to that little stuff. Know that your prayers are being answered. Know that he's there. Know that he loves you. And, and know that, you know, together you guys can really make a huge difference praying for one another. Praying as a husband and wife. Praying for your children you know, and, and having prayer warriors that you can go to. I am so blessed to have such tremendous prayer warriors that I can go to and ask for prayer in my weakest moments and, and not feel weak for asking. And that's important. And just know he loves you. Know he's there and know that he will deliver you from whatever it is you're going through. And, and it might not be, you know, like, now, yeah. you might have to go through it longer than what you really think you need to, but uh, God's refining you mm -hmm. through those trials and, and stuff. He's refining you and making you stronger. Um, you know, I mean, this, our situation has been going on for, what, five yeah, six, six five, years. Five, six years. Three since my illness, but I was progressively getting sick and we didn't know um, why for three you know, before that. And, and I know there's people listening right now that have been going through things for years and years and years too. Yeah. So, you, you know, it, it doesn't happen necessarily. Sometimes it does happen overnight, but it doesn't always happen overnight. Um... As much as we would like it to, yeah. um, but just when when it when the situation is over, nothing nothing lasts forever. Um, it's a season. Look at it as a season of your life. It's it will pass. You know, when it's over, and you can look back and see how God mm -hmm. was refining you, lining it up, and and lining things up. Um, it's it's amazing it's amazing and and I can already see you know when I look back in my relationship with with God and my relationship with Tammy um, I can look back and see how I've grown through um, through this situation mm -hmm. um, I've definitely definitely grown you know big time in that and that's that's the important thing I, I I think if if you refuse to learn mm -hmm. from your struggles um, you're in a sad you're in sad shape because it, it's those struggles that make you stronger as much as we don't like them um, you know and if you don't if you don't learn from those situations it's gonna keep on happening yep. um It'll keep you know, taking you back to that place till you learn it it's no different than you know 
a a country, any country that doesn't learn from history, or refuses to learn from history, you know, yep. you're going to repeat them mistakes. Yep. And uh, it's the same way in our our personal life with God. Um, you you gotta you know, if you don't learn from your mistakes, and you refuse to grow stronger in those mistakes you're going to keep making those mistakes over and over and over and over again and you're going to wonder well why is this keep happening to me why is this why is god doing this to me <laughs> maybe you ought to check your heart and i've had to do that <laughs> more than i like to admit you know and i say to you guys you know don't be intimidated by my level of faith because any any anybody's, anybody's Anyways. Just because someone might be a little further along in their their walk and their relationship with God doesn't it doesn't matter. He loves us all. He 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 wants us to grow, and you grow by spending time in His Word and studying and and praying. That's that's how you grow in in For God. Sure. Well, and that's why my faith is what it is and where I am today because of the walk that we've had. God has just, I've pulled into God. God is my resource. And I don't care what people think of that. God saved my life and I don't care what, what people think of that. For me, I see the value in it and I don't, I don't worry about that anymore. I want to um, say something there. You, you said that you don't care what people think. Um, I, I've had a, the opportunity, I don't, like she said, we don't watch much for um, YouTube and stuff we just don't really have much time to do that um but i've watched in the evening um i've sat down a couple of times and watched it's a podcast with uh, phil robertson from uh, duck dynasty it's called unashamed uh, anybody that hasn't watched it i, I suggest you, you watch it it's, it's really really interesting um yeah i like to, it to to hear what they have to say and and stuff and it's pretty pretty neat so it's on check youtube it out. it's on youtube and then they also have it on the podcast apps so you can listen to it as an actual podcast or you can sit and watch it as a video and actually see them they record record it and then put the mp3 or the voice of on the on the but podcast it's, but it's it's good yeah it's on a on a shame with phil robertson and something i want to give you guys to hang on to. This has been my favorite verse um, since I've been sick, but I've always loved this verse, but it's something that I really held tight to. James 1, and it is uh, 2 through, I believe, 6. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy, for you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow, for when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete and needing nothing. And you know, <laughs> that that endurance and, and that picture, like this Bible verse creates a picture for me. And I really hold tight to that. And I don't want to say that I, I look forward to the next hard thing we have to go through. But because of that verse, I feel like I'm like... For lack of better terms, he's gonna laugh. Warriored up, I feel like. All right, I feel like I've become a warrior for Christ through these circumstances because the Bible has given me such tools like that to put on my armor I, and to I, fight. Honestly, <laughs> that's one I, I really. Whew, it's hard a hard one to swallow. So it's um, difference when, in perspective. When, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it um, an opportunity of great joy. Ooh. I tell you what, that's that makes me. <laughs> you know what I, I don't know. You but, know when I came but, to terms with that. But God's there with you, and it, he, that's he just it. You. Well, and that was just it. You know when I came to terms with that verse, when I was laying flat on my back and could do nothing. And it, it, it is, it's just, yeah. like you said, I guess it's difference of perspective perspective and stuff. And, and, and also what you've person, encountered. Per personalities and stuff. And what you've encountered so far, mm -hmm. you know. 
and what you like we each have verses and tools that we can go to and that we can hold tight to that give us comfort and for me that's one of them tammy says show more yeah isn't that awful show more. it's the right hand watch no it's not no it ain't i bet you if i touched it it would oh gosh do no don't touch my screen we've seen what happens when you touch the screen <laughs> Okay, Tammy says, I recently looked back to 2000 when the Lord started a certain journey of ours. I wouldn't have realized it at any time. Oh, come on, show me. Let me try. All right. Careful, guys, it could blow up. No, you just have to touch. No, just touch, touch, touch. There, he did it. All right. Nice. He's got the magic power. <laughs> um, I wouldn't have realized it at any time during it, but now I see where he planned it all. Yeah, it's really amazing. And our story when we met, I, I can, if you have my book in the first chapter, it talks about it. Um, and it's long, so I won't share it today, but for another time, maybe I'll share that. But um, we both had come through some pretty rough stuff and God brought us together. God actually brought him back from Wyoming with no purpose and he couldn't understand why mm. and I ended up on a farm that I absolutely hated because I wanted to be in the woods and it was absolutely beautiful and we ended up colliding there so and then from there the path was pretty amazing and it all went downhill from there <laughs> okay maybe not but <laughs> no it went 2500 miles from there yeah and we created quite an adventure but it's it's you know you don't know what God's doing um, you know, we, we, we go through things and we just, we wonder, you know, what's going on? Why, why are these things happening? But God, God, uh, does things. He, they said hi to you know, earlier. He lines, he lines things up and he's, there's many reasons you could be going through a situation. And he's got great plans. His plans are so great. And you know what? Like he said, sometimes the situation you're going through may be rough as all get out and it has nothing to do with you. It could be because the situation you're going through is because someone else is going through a learning process and until they learn, your situation won't change. So there's all kinds of scenarios to why that can be. And it can be really hard, but we have tools. We have the Bible, we have his word, and we have prayer. Would you like to pray and end this today? You're putting me in the spot. Oh, I am. I don't like that. No, but you like to pray. Well, yeah, but whatever. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for joining. Today was long, and I uh, we'll, we'll end it here, but I'll get him back on. This was good. And it's good to feed off of each other. It's good to share, you know, different aspects. You know, men think differently than women do. And it's interesting. Also, that's a good learning thing um, because not everybody realizes clearly that men and women think differently and, and handle different situations differently. You know, sometimes you assume that because you're going through the same circumstance that you're both processing it the same way. But mm -hmm. clearly that's not the case. Mm -hmm. And that Bible verse speaks to me. It doesn't speak to him. Oh, no, it speaks to me. But, but you know yes. what I mean. You know what I mean. But. So, you know, that's also something unique is when you start praying together. Um, through prayer, you learn a lot, you know, um, based on how each other is praying and what we are asking for and what we have to say and what we're thankful for. You know, maybe sometimes those certain things wouldn't be spoken normally, but through a prayer they are. Um, so sometimes through prayer you're gifted certain things, if that makes sense. Um, but anyway, I want to encourage you guys to be strong in your walk and to be prepared. We'll talk more about preparedness this month and we'll continue to keep talking. And you know what, I want to share this too. You know, we may end up living... Be, being forced to escape to the woods and build our own shelter and live in the woods for the winter. We don't know that, but you know what? The one thing we do know is that we have each other, we are resourceful, and we have God. And that alone is enough for me. So we're going to let him say our prayer for today, and, and then I'll let you guys scoot. <clears throat> Dear Lord, we come before you here um, today. Um, just thank you for your many blessings, everything you do for us, even when we can't 
see what you're doing or understand what you're doing. Um, we know you have a purpose way bigger than than what we could ever imagine. Um, pray that you would just be with each one that is out there uh, listening and those that will listen. Um, pray that you would just be with them and strengthen them. There's some going through some crazy stuff. Um, pray that you just be with them, comfort them, love them. Let them, let them feel your presence, Lord. Um, just continue to guide us and give us strength and help us to uh, keep your, our eyes focused on, on you at all times. And uh, thank you again for always loving us and providing for us. We ask these things in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you guys for joining us today. Say thank you to Tammy and Alex. Thank you. <laughs> Love you guys. Have a great rest of your day. Great week. And just know that God is present in your life and that we are praying for each of you. We're praying for you guys. Have a great day. Love you and God bless.